If you've played Elden Ring's PvP at least a little bit, chances are you've run into this weapon before. Heck, if you've played through Elden Ring or any Souls game for that matter, the likelihood is pretty high that you've either come across this weapon or have used it yourself. And today, I'll be going over my experience with this PvP powerhouse. Let's get to 20 likes and see if we can get two more subscribers from this video. The weapon I'm referring to is the Greatsword. This weapon has become an icon in From Software games, only second to the Moonlight Greatsword in terms of notoriety. It's always been a great weapon, no pun intended, and in Elden Ring, it's no different. My PvP experience saw highs and lows, both at the extreme end of their respective spectrum, and I learned a lot that I want to share with you today. My name is Snake Eyes with 1UP Gaming, let's get into the video. The Greatsword has a diverse move set, but sweeping attacks consist of the majority of its attack types, with the charged heavy strike covering an almost 360 degree area around your character. The Greatsword has a thrusting type move that you can utilize after rolling, and an overhead attack if you do a jumping heavy strike. Knowing which attack to use in a given situation is paramount for using this weapon effectively due to the slow startup of each attack animation. The great thing about the Greatsword is that you can pick your weapon art, and in this footage I was using Eruption, which is a good move that has super armor which allows you to absorb a hit, uh, hopefully to trade a blow with your opponent, uh, while also creating an area that's hazardous for them and serves as a good place for you to sit and rest while you recover some lost stamina. Eruption is a really good weapon art for the Greatsword because of the way that its attack animation starts. Uh, at first glance, it looks like a standard overhead attack, and in some cases, people believed that they could hit me out of the move. Uh, it brought them in close, and best case scenario, it would hit them twice and cause some AoE damage. Uh, but even in the worst case scenario, it put pressure on them to back off and create some distance between us due to the lava that it leaves on the floor. But typically, I found that I could trade blows with my opponents where I would come out on top in those kinds of situations. The Greatsword could be perceived as just an offensive weapon, but the range of the weapon allows you to play defensively as well. Utilize the range of the Greatsword as much as you can to try to anticipate when opponents want to be aggressive, then throw out an attack that they'll hopefully run into. One thing I encountered often during my fights were opponents trying to run directly towards me for an attack. A standard light attack or a weapon art would stuff that approach while establishing a clear space between me and my opponent. However, this method should be used with caution. The biggest weakness of the Greatsword is the fact that a lot of its attacks have a lower angle, which means faster characters can run and jump over your moves and punish you with a flurry of counterattacks. One way to avoid this from happening is to utilize free aim, which gives you a little more control of your moves and allows you to adjust the angles of most attacks. As you can see in this example, the rolling attack is a move that can have its attack height angle adjusted when you're not locked on, and with a little practice, you can get a lot of benefit from disengaging your lock on and trying to hit your opponent this way. All in all, it's beneficial to learn how to fight with and without your lock on, and the Great Sword is the perfect introductory weapon to get that kind of training so you can carry that skill over when you're using smaller weapons. I highly recommend practicing and knowing when to disengage from your lock on during combat and then slowly start incorporating it into your playstyle. If your opponent is knowledgeable of the matchup, they can easily close the distance if you make your moves predictable. When going up against more seasoned players, this weapon is at huge risk of being parried just like other Colossal Sword class weapons. Because of this, you'll have to be a little unpredictable with your approach. You'll have to be a little bit more strategic with your moves to throw off your opponent's timing. Try delaying your attack, or if you're going for a charged attack, make sure to adjust the timing to make it harder for your opponent to gauge exactly when they should throw out a parry. If you miss an attack, Judge the situation, but think twice before throwing out another attack because your opponent may know the timing, making you more susceptible to being parried. As you can see in this example here, all it took was one slip up on my part for me to lose the fight, and thankfully, I had another chance to go up against this opponent. In my second bout with him, I made sure to make my timing a little staggered, I also made sure to get distance because I was now kind of familiar with his fighting style. 
But all throughout the fight, I was being conscious that one slip up, one predictable movement on my part would make it easy for him to punish me and win the match. In moments like this, it's definitely a mental endurance game. And as you can see, I was dealing chip damage after chip damage, landing a hit here and there. But all the while, I was making sure that no matter what approach I took, I tried not to be so readable. Towards the end of the fight, he was definitely throwing out the parries in a last ditch effort to see if I'd slip up. He took that same approach in our previous match, so I just made sure to look out for those parries and to punish him right after. This is where it benefits you to utilize the entire move set of the Great Sword and not just certain moves. By keeping your attacks somewhat random, it makes it hard for people to know what type of timing they should use. And as long as you're being aggressively random and as long as they're being passive and waiting, you're in the winning situation in those kinds of encounters. Uh, condition your opponents to expect unpredictability. Overall, the Great Sword is a fun weapon to use. Uh, it always has been. Its main benefit is being able to use any weapon art that aligns with your playstyle. Uh, it adds a little customization, but the core weapon itself is plenty useful. It has attacks that sweep in various angles. It's pretty intimidating to go up against. And while it is on the slow side, you don't need to land many hits in order to defeat your opponent. So make sure you time your attacks wisely, keep mixing it up, condition your opponent, and adjust your playstyle between offensive and defensive. Losing with this weapon is painful. I found that if I was going to lose, it would typically happen pretty quick. It would make me feel like the weapon is no good or that I was bad. And really what it is, is that the weapon is kind of tough to take into PvP. The Great Sword is a balancing act. You can deal a lot of damage, but you'll have to adjust your strategy a little. Winning with this weapon feels amazing, so it's definitely the extreme end of the spectrum whether you win or lose, but overall, it's a really fun weapon, and if you haven't used it in PvP, I highly suggest you give it a shot. It's extremely rewarding and pretty frustrating at times, but it wouldn't be a From Software experience if it was any other way. I hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. Um, the goal here is to get about 20 likes and maybe two new subscribers out of this video. So if you enjoyed, maybe you'll consider sticking around for more Elden Ring PvP videos. And I'll also be doing Armored Core 6 videos as well. So I'll see you guys soon. But until then, take care.